to welcome you once again to In Search of Christianity. As we come to the conclusion of our study that we've been doing for quite a number of weeks on prayer, Conversations with My Father, and we will conclude going back once again to Oldham, England, to the other side of the pond, as it were, to join uh, a study that Alice and I did there with brothers and sisters, I think about five years ago. So we just blessed and pleased that you can join us for that. And I uh, hope you are blessed by it in Jesus' name. Hi, I want to welcome you once again to our Bible studies here at Bible Talk. Here, once again, being Oldham in England, and we're at Joe Believe's office in Town Center in Oldham. We're continuing on in our study of prayer, uh, <clears throat> studying the Our Father, the prayer that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. One of the greatest examples of true prayer and faith, and I'm going out on a limb here, <clears throat> because you can't see it in the Bible was the Apostle Paul in Acts 27, 28, after he gets shipwrecked. You know the account? He is in this massive, massive storm as he has been taken by ship as a prisoner to Rome. And the ship he's on board, and it's really a beautiful story to go read in Acts 27. It might have been a little tough to live. But anyhow, he gets shipwrecked. And he goes on the island in Malta. And when they get there, all these guys are coming out of the water, out of the Mediterranean Sea, out of being shipwrecked. And they build, the first thing they do is build a fire mm -hmm. to try and get dry and warm. Mm -hmm. And Paul is gathering firewood for this fire. And he says, as he's gathering the firewood, bam! A viper, a poisonous snake, jumps out and latches onto him. Think about how you would pray if that happened to you in your life. Did you sleep? No. <laughs> And not only that, you get on your iPhone and start calling all your brothers and sisters for a little Pentecostal prayer meeting. On Facebook. <laughs> or if it were, maybe a Pentecostal pity party. I, I don't know. Uh, the fact is, he just shook it off and kept on going. If you don't think that in his mind, his heart, and his spirit, he was having a conversation with the Lord, then you don't appreciate Paul the way I do. Because I know that in his spirit, he's saying, Thank you for having this covered, Lord. Mm -hmm. And he shook it off. Because he knew that God was his deliverer. He knew that God watches over his word. If the storm couldn't get him, the snake wasn't going to get him. He knew he to get some own as well. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Because God had yeah. a coach. Just like with the apostles going across the Sea of Galilee when the storm rose, he had already said, we're going to the other side. His word cannot, it says in John 10, his word cannot be broken. So he's trusting God to get in there. Yes. But then it changes your prayer life. Mm -hmm. You don't go into a panic. No. You just it's kind of like, said it. It's and, not that I'm going. And because of that, that became the witness and the testimony yeah. that led to a revival on that island. Yeah. Right? That's right. When do we get to that place <laughs> that when something tragic, deadly strikes us, mm -hmm. something deadly strikes us, we can just shake it off and keep on going. And say, okay, Lord, how, what's this going to do? What's in this for you, Lord? Yeah. And, and that's why Paul talks a lot about the mind, the mindset. Yes. The new mind, yes. think like Christ. Yes. It's like the more you think, mm -hmm. the more this thing becomes <coughs> normal. normal. Yeah. And just yes. kind of really, it's opening up really. Yeah. Right. <coughs> As I say, we're, we're assuming that people pray here, right? Remember, this is being spoken to disciples. Mm -hmm. This is being spoken to believers, the Sermon on the Mount, right? Mm -hmm. And what he has said here in the beginning of this is that don't be like don't be like the Pharisees, you know, who pray just to be seen by men. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the Gentiles who think that God will hear you because you say a whole lot of words. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's saying people, he assumes that people are out there praying. Mm -hmm. He's trying to teach us what our prayer life is supposed to be mm -hmm. and what it is supposed to be is world changing. Mm -hmm. At least the world right around us. Yeah. Because if you go to prayer, and remember what James said, be quick to listen, be quick to hear, right? Be slow to speak. If like Jesus, you can say, and he said in John chapter 12, that he didn't speak anything, he didn't hear from the Father. Hmm. If you are going to prayer to hear from God, 
rather than to give him your Christmas list. Yeah. All of a sudden, you are speaking the Word of God out in the world. Those are creative, powerful words that have power. Because God's Word does not return to Him void without accomplishing His purpose. If we get in the habit of speaking what we have heard from Him, you will see change around you. And most importantly, what I just said is change around you. It's not about changing in you, in your circumstance, your situation. It is being used by God to change things around you. You and I are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Ambassadors, first of all, are not allowed to speak their own words. Mm. They're not supposed to speak their own words because they represent something else. Okay? An ambassador from the United Kingdom goes to some other country. He represents the United Kingdom. He, he has lost his own personality. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. It's not about you. You represent the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. When you speak, all of the weight, all of the power, all of the glory of the kingdom of God resides behind those words. God wants to change your prayer life so that you speak His word with that power. You'll do that when you stop going and saying, can I have another piece of candy? Can I have another piece of candy? And your life becomes focused on the things of the Spirit of God. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This prayer started with our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It starts with a focus on the Lord God Almighty. It ends, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You know what? Our life is supposed to be filled from beginning to end with the things of God, with God Himself, with the glory of God, the power of God. Our prayer life, I mean, it's like when a little child runs up to daddy and wants something. You know, it's immediately about those things. How much of our prayer life do we go to God and it's immediately about the things that we're concerned with rather than trying to find the things that he's concerned with. It's important to know whose kingdom we're serving. Otherwise, like Solomon, we'll forget why we have been given the gift that God has given us. Mm -hmm. The gift to go with confidence before the throne of God. It's not, it's not about us. You pray over people, you pray for people, don't ever take the credit for it. That's very, that's very common today in the church. Um, that's the way it is. In Acts 3, verse 12, it says, um, when, when Peter, remember the story of the cripple as you're going up to the temple, and they see him and he's ready to beg, you know, mm -hmm. and he says, silver and gold have, have we none of but such as I have, I give to you. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Well, the people were astounded. And Peter said, when he saw these people being amazed by what God had wrought at their hands, he said, Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Or why do you gaze at us? As if by our own power or piety, we had made him walk. Mm -hmm. He refused to, to take any credit or glory for what God had done. Oh, wouldn't that be nice to see you again today? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's important to understand to whom belongs the glory. Lest like the Israelites who presumed to control God during the time of Eli. That's when they were battling with the Philistines. And they took the Ark of the Covenant in because they thought, well, you know, they're in control. They take it and God has to do what they want. Mm -hmm. Well, they came back defeated without the Ark of the Covenant. And they said, the glory has departed. Mm -hmm. Ichabod. All right? In Isaiah 48, it's seven, in verse 11, it says, my, For my own sake, for my own sake, I will act. For how can my name be profaned, and my glory I will not give to another? You know, I, I see too much of this in the body of Christ today. People taking credit for the work and the glory of God. Isaiah 48, 11. 
And remember what Jesus had said just before this in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Not glorify you. Right? Psalm 24, 7 and 8 says, Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Amen. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. So, we, we need to get to this place where we really understand that our lives are about Him, not about us. When you get to that truth and understand that He is your Father, that's how it all started, our Father. Who cares for you and takes care of you? You don't have you don't have to ask him to do this. I mean, he will he will give you your daily bread. That's what fathers do for the children. He will do these things without you asking before because he knows before you can think before you can ask he knows exactly what you need. And he promised unconditional absolutely. But he promised he would supply all of our needs. He promised through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, and he watches over his word to perform it. Okay. Um, praise. We're supposed to be a people of praise. A lot of our prayer life should just be praise. Now, praise is just talking about Him. It's praise Him. Right? Yeah. Because that's when we see victory in our lives. Mm -hmm. right? Isaiah 42.10 talks about you know, we sing a new song unto the Lord. We, if we want to praise Him, He will go forth as a mighty warrior. He will defeat His enemies. Because there is enemies mm -hmm. right, that are coming against us. Is it one of the children? Cheerleaders, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. Go, God, go. Yeah. Kick that down. Kick that down. Go, God, go. Faith's got to be some kind of stuff. Because I know it's like some of the nuts and stuff. Amen. Amen. I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I feel a bit, you know, like sometimes you get off, you don't feel great. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed a lot recently I've been saying this is the day that you've made Lord I will rejoice yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and I keep going that's right it is a choice it is a choice it's not about how we feel yeah. 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 comes to the seminar yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a choice yeah. okay the purpose of prayer is for is for us to get in touch with God so we hear, and that's more important, because faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. And the righteous walk by faith and not by sight. We need to hear from God. When we get in the habit of hearing from Him, that builds our faith, and we know that the things that we need are taken care of. And again, it just changes our prayer life so we can start to pray for others. The purpose of prayer is to give us a heart to serve God. When all is said and done, I mean, I, I think it's that simple. Mm -hmm. So that we have a heart to serve God. And it comes from being in conversation. Because when you sit, when you get, the better you get to know Him, the more you understand that He loves you. And the more you understand that He loves you. It's like Paul said, Romans chapter 8. I mean, this is the core of Paul's ministry, his life, his being. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's the place we have to get. I just want to do, uh, because that's really, that's the end of the prayer, right? Uh, I need to talk about the go, God, go. I, yeah. I, I have a, I preached a sermon, I've preached it now many times in many places in the world, <coughs> called the Attitude of the Righteous, and it's about having a righteous attitude. And at the end of it, I talk about prayer, and I, I've actually talked about that verse from Isaiah 42 that I quoted. That if we sing a new song unto the Lord, if we praise Him from the coastlands, that He will go forth as a mighty warrior, and He will defeat His enemies. Right? That's that's spiritual warfare. Yes. When God goes out and, and does yeah. the battle. But that makes us like, in America, we understand it's better cheerleaders. Right? Is that it? It's his battle Well, because it's His battle. So, while we're there, we're, by praising Him, we're cheering Him. Cheering him. Just, yeah. So, I, I've done this, and I've done this, uh, you know, I've I, I, I'll preach this sermon and then ask a pastor, you know, to come up and, and pray with me, join me in prayer. And ask people, whoever wants prayer, just raise your hand or stand up and do whatever. I'll start praying. And I, I'll tell people right off the bat, I said, this isn't going to be a King James prayer. Uh, but God said it would be like little children. And I'll pray. Go, God, go. Kick that devil, kick that devil, go. And the first thing you see is these pastors. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> until you see a look of realization come yes. over their faces that this is God. This is what we are. We're to be cheerleaders. We're just to praise Him and cheer Him on. It's a simple prayer. And you want to say, I just share this. We were in, as a matter of fact, it was the year that I met Joseph Bolivi. We were in Cameroon, and I was in Cameroon preaching. We were at a conference, and I preached that sermon. Or Arnold translated it for me there. And there were, oh my gosh, a couple few hundred people there. And at the end of the sermon, I did that. They go, God, home. they just started praying. They just started praising God. This is, you know, in Africa. I think the praise went on much longer than the sermon was going on. They were deliberated. They were. But the next night they came back to the conference and there were so many testimonies of healing. Yes. Nobody had laid hands on anyone. But God had moved upon that congregation yes. as they, as they, they praised him. You know, we have this idea that prayer has to be in the King James. Yes. You know, I mean, it has to be. <coughs> that's getting back to where the Pharisees were. Right? He, is, he has come to set us free, set the captives free. And part of the being free is free from the captivity of religion and tradition. It makes this relationship with daddy formal. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a loving father. He has called us his children. We can run into his arms. And he'll be there to wrap us up and hug us and take care of us. The fact is, in real life, because that's what I said, this is about, you know, it's not about being theologians and Bible scholars. This is about how do we live our lives. How effective are our prayers? What hinders prayer? What stops prayer? Because, you know, I, I meet Christians all the time. They talk to me, well, I pray, I pray, I pray, but nothing happens, and nothing happens. Why doesn't something happen? I think it's a, a perspective, you know, it always comes back to perspective with me. And I, I think, um, as you were saying, you know, the closer you get to the Lord, you, you see things differently. You know, yes. you might have missed that, the prayer it has happened. That you, you don't actually know that the prayer has happened because you too busy. That's you, talking. That's true. Like Elisha at Dothan. Yeah. Yeah. Open his eyes. Open his eyes and he might see you. Yeah. David prayed in the Psalm, Psalm 54 too. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. God does hear our prayers. His ear is not dull. His arm is not short. He hears our prayer. But think about these verses. <coughs> James chapter 4, verses 2 to 4 says this. You lust and do not have. So you commit murder. You're envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your pleasures, you adulteresses. You do not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. There's that selfishness. When our prayers are about our selfishness, me, me, me. that's going to hinder your prayer. You ask and do not receive. And when the world prayers and not kingdom's prayers. He who turns away his ear from listening to the law, even his prayer is an abomination. That's Proverbs 28 9. You've got to spend time in the Word. Now, why do you have to spend time in the Word? Because if you want to be an effective prayer, remember what John said. This is a confidence that we have that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us and he hears. But how do you know what is willing? You abide in the prayer. And if you're not spending time in the Word, you're going to pray foolish things, things that are not in His will. And not, that's within your prayer life, that'll stop your prayer life dead. Yes. Yes. Okay? Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that yes. your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. You know, we've talked about this a number of times. If you don't have a right relationship with God, you will never have a right relationship with people. No. The other side of that coin is, if you don't have a right relationship with people, you won't have a right relationship yeah. with God. Okay. He said, whichever you've done to the least of my brother, you've done unto me. Yeah. Okay. So if you stand praying and you realize you've got a problem with a person, deal with it. Deal with it. Okay? I, you know, I said, I've done an awful lot of counseling and I've had people come to me and say, oh, I love God, but I don't love my wife anymore. <laughs> I said, you liar. You liar. You don't love God anymore than you love your wife. That's a fact. That's, right. That's a fact. The love of God is supposed to call us, cause us to love others. Love is not a feeling. It is a choice. 
<laughs> I saw you perk up on that one. <laughs> it is. That's right. Don't think for a minute that Jesus Christ hung nailed on that cross and felt love for the people down there who had beaten him, spit on him, mocked him, whipped him, put a thorn, a crown of thorns on his head. There's a difference between liking people and loving people. Mm. You choose to love. Mm. One of the things that can hinder your prayer life, and we talked about this, Peter wrote about it. Husbands, you got things that are not going right with your wife, it says it will hinder Praise your prayer life. Your prayers will be hindered. You have to have a right relationship with people. Okay? Mm -hmm. This this is you know, this is the reality. Yes. Okay? It's the key. It says if if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. It says if you pray, believing that you have received, right? How do, you, how do you pray, believing you receive? Well, if you're praying according to His will, and you know it's God's will, yeah. then you have the right to believe on it. You should have absolute confidence. The script changed. That was uh, James chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. You know, it's like Joe quoted, Jesus said, Father, I know you here. Mm How -hmm. did he know that he heard? Because he knew that everything he was praying was in God and the Father's will. Right? And he didn't do anything unless he heard it from the Father. Mm -hmm. Because if you get it in the Word, then you know God has spoken it into existence. Mm -hmm. You may not see it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, not seen. Right? The evidence, the conviction of things not seen. So, you should have this, this belief Guys, I, I don't remember who I was talking to the other day recently. He said, you know, if, if you need a car, and you're praying for a car, and you know that it's a need in your life. I'm not talking about, oh, I just want to, you know, I would really, God, I would really like to have a bent knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about if you need a car, right? Mm -hmm. God said he, he'll supply your needs. Yes. So go out and buy yourself some polish. Start checking, go online and start checking for the insurance policies. Take action based on that. Faith has to have action behind it. You know, but, but start acting on the conviction of the assurance of your prayers. You can do that if you know that what you are praying lines up with the Word of God. It lines up with His will. If two of you agree touching anything, well, it's good that we gather together and pray together. But there's nothing as powerful as knowing that you are in agreement with God when you pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true because there's <coughs> even if within a group there can be disagreement. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like no matter how much we pray, yeah. but because of lack of agreement, You're not in the same mind. That, yeah, this is one of the reasons. You know, it says in Amos, you know, can two walk together unless they're agreed. You, you have you have to make sure that you're in the right fellowship. Yeah. Okay. Um, bad company spoils good morals. You have to be really prayerful about spending time with unbelievers. I, I see a lot of ecumenical prayer movements where people come together and they pray. Um, but don't, you know, maybe you don't want to pray in the name of Jesus because you might offend some of the people you're praying with. What? Are you kidding? <laughs> what are you nuts? Are you going mad? Are you dysfunctional? If there are people you can't pray in the name of Jesus, you shouldn't be praying for them. You need to be praying for them, not praying with them. <laughs> so, we need to come to that place where we understand that God has given us authority to use His Word. He has entrusted us with His Word. He has entrusted us with His love. He has poured His love into our hearts. He has written His words on the tablets of our hearts. We, he has given us power and authority in our lives. If we have the confidence that we know that what we're praying lines up with His Word, we need to speak it with power and immediately begin to act on it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God is amazing. And he sees and responds to our faith. I don't know the whole deal with Abraham and Sarah. But when God spoke to Abraham and said, she's going to have a child. Ho, ho, ho. 
She should have sat down and started knitting right there. <laughs> she would have had a bunch of baby clothes on by the time the father came. Take action based on your prayers. Have confidence. One of the things we need to start doing is being a people of thanksgiving. Start giving thanks to God. Don't wait till you can see it. So I'm going to end on this. Think about it. One of the greatest trials that the people of God ever went through was at the Red Sea. Now, how did they get to the Red Sea? God led them. God led them to the Red Sea. Yeah. Right? He delivered them out of the hand of Pharaoh, but he delivered them and then led them to the Red Sea. Red Sea that he had built. He had called into existence. They weren't there by accident. God was in control of that whole situation. Yeah. He delivered them, parted the water. Did they, they were confronted with an impossible, impassable barrier, but God delivered them. He parted the waters and they passed through the parted waters of the Red Sea. They got to the other side and it says they sang and they danced and they had a jubilee. That people did not enter into the promised land. They mumbled, grumbled, and groaned and complained and wandered around in circles for 40 years because they were not a people of faith. Moses said, stand by and see the salvation of God. Once God parted the waters, they moved. They should have sang and danced and had a jubilee on the other side of the Red Sea before the waters parted. And they would have walked into the land walking in faith and not by sight. I'm telling you the truth. We need to learn to sing and dance and have a jubilee, start giving thanks to God before the water parts. And this is what Jesus said to him, Thomas. He said, Blessed are those who believe. Yes. 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 Yeah. But we should get excited, shouldn't we? Believe in that he is going to part those walls. That's the only denomination I've ever belonged to. What kind of Christian are you? I'm excited. excited. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not excited, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you've made it possible for us to come before you. That there, you've given us an intercessor, your son Jesus Christ, that we can come boldly with confidence before your throne, the throne of grace. And Lord, knowing that anything that we pray in your will, you hear, and it's done, Father. Lord, you have entrusted us with your word. You have called us your ambassadors. Help us, Lord God, to see the needs around us, the needs of our brothers and sisters, the needs of even the lost and of our enemies, Lord God, and to bring that need before you, to pray for them, Lord. To pray, believing that things can change in their lives, Lord God, for the glory of your name, by your power and for your glory. Lord, give us that confidence to pray prayers that change things around us. We know that you are changing us, that you are transforming us and bringing us from glory to glory, Lord God. Help us to rejoice in that more and more each day, to trust in that more and more each day, and to go forth truly proclaiming your excellencies to the world around us. We praise you, we thank you, we love you, Lord God, and above all, we thank you for being our Father and calling us to be your children. And Lord, we just come before you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and rejoice. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love.